All right. Hi, everyone. <laughs> this is the team for the day. Woo. Okay, so the first thing, uh, I'm Janina. Welcome to my home. The first thing that I have to tell you is that nobody paid us to do this. <laughs> Nor should they. This is, nor should, <laughs> this is not sanctioned. Nobody, there is no boss. Nobody's going to get fired. No one's going to get hired for us doing this. Just know that this is us hanging out and having a great time. If we fuck up, we, fuck, we don't care. We just like this, okay? If you haven't played Quantum Break, then I don't know what the fuck you're playing, but I play Quantum Break. These three people are in it. The thing that we're about to read for you is an Easter egg that you can find in the game. It's a screenplay um, written by Bruce Livingstone. It's actually been written by Tyler. This is the writer himself. Um, and uh, we're now going to attempt to do the live reading of Time Knife. <clears throat> so our clap syncs? Oh yes, we should. Oh, yeah. Thank you, editor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, ready? What are you doing? I'll do one. Ready? One, two. <coughs> okay. Act <clears throat> one. Interior. Office. Night. Bruce Savage stands in his office. He is sexually attractive. Somebody knocks on Bruce's door. And he opens it. <clears throat> it's a scientist lady. She looks like a librarian with glasses, but she is actually a scientist. You can tell that because she has a lab coat. Help me. Okay. Take this knife because some bad apples are trying to steal it and it is very important. Okay. What's your name, handsome? I'm Bruce. Let's shake hands. Bruce and Lady Scientist shake hands. Wow. You almost broke my hand with that handshake. You are definitely a tough guy. She is impressed with Bruce's strength. She looks at his large biceps like they are delicious pieces of ham, but she doesn't want to eat them. Here is the knife. <laughs> Lady Scientist hands Bruce the knife. It looks mostly like a knife, but also like a time machine, because it is both a knife and a time machine, but Bruce doesn't know that yet. Goons break through the windows and shoot the Scientist lady. She dies. <laughs> Avenge me. Okay. Bruce kills the goons with his legs by doing lots of kicking at them. They are dead real quick. Looks like I got a leg up on you guys. The audience probably laughs here. So Bruce waits to deliver his next line for around five seconds so that... Everybody has calmed down. What is so special about this knife? Bruce stabs the knife into his chair. The chair disappears. The chair disappeared! He looks at a picture on his wall, which is a big photograph from 1932 with lots of people from 1932 in it. Bruce's chair is in the picture. Interesting. My chair traveled back in time to 1932, when I stabbed it. When I stab things, they travel through time. That explains why this knife also looks like a knife. That explains why this knife looks like a knife, but also looks like a time machine. Because it is both. Bruce's real goofy friend from across the hall runs into the room. He trips on something on the floor. His name is Slobbo. He isn't as fat as his name sounds. Ah, yeah. That is Slobbo's catchphrase, and he says it in a real funny way. Bruce, you saved my life. The lady scientist was only faking being dead. Are you married? Only to my job. Oh, I find that attractive, but also respectable. She kisses Bruce's cheek. What about my cheek? Oh, man. That is Slobo's other catchphrase, which he says in a different but equally funny way. Bruce waits a few seconds for the audience to stop laughing. <laughs> B. 
before speaking. Wait. Those lips were man lips, not woman lips. Bruce pulls off the lady scientist wig. She is actually Bruce's boss, Paul Marine. Paul Marine is a douche. My boss! But why? <laughs> I wanted to kill those guys. I wanted you to kill those guys because they wanted me dead. And I knew you were real tough so you could kill them easy. But I don't respect you as an employee so I also make you do the shitty jobs even though you've been working at my company more than most of the other guys and are real smart. Also, I don't like you because my girlfriend finds you sexually attractive. Now I understand. Give me my time knife back. Paul Marine snaps his fingers. And 73 goons surround Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> there are 73 of us. I don't have time for this. Bruce stabs himself with the time knife and disappears. He time traveled using the time knife. Bruce opens the door. Mm. Now he is twice as jacked. You're even more sexually attractive. How is this possible? I stabbed myself and traveled to the past, then trained in all kinds of martial arts to become even stronger. I also strapped explosives into everybody's boots in the past, so that when I press this detonator, you will all explode. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm glad I have stocks in this company. Why? Because business is booming. Bruce presses the detonator and all 73 goons blow up like eggs in a microwave. <laughs> Poor Marine doesn't explode. Huh. Luckily I used my metal detector this morning and found the explosives. So I switched boots with somebody else. Say, Slabo, whose boots are you wearing? No! Slabo explodes. Say that again. Slobo explodes. My best friend, you'll pay for this. You don't want to stab me with that time knife. Why not? Because I'm actually you from the future. That doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. Remember that time knife is also a time machine. I am you from the future, but I stabbed myself with the time knife in order to come back here and do all of this. But we don't look the same. That is a good point, and I am glad you brought it up. First, I time traveled 700 years into the future, to a time where humans have created advanced technology that allows surgeries that completely change people's faces and bodies. I had this surgery performed so that you wouldn't be able to recognize me, but I am actually you in disguise, and I can prove it because I know many, many things about you. Like what? Like you have a birthmark on your left ankle. I do have a birthmark on my left ankle. I am starting to believe you now. We should, because even though I have a new body and I kept that birthmark on my left ankle so that when I met you I could prove that I was actually you from the future. Now I will show you. Paul lifts up the left leg of his ah, pants. Shit, do it again. Paul lifts up the left leg of his pants. But there is no birthmark. Instead, there is an ankle holster for a gun. Paul pulls out the gun and aims it at Bruce. <laughs> I was lying this whole time. I'm not actually you. I was just saying all that so I could get my gun. Son of a bitch. Also, in the future, I melted the time knife and turned it into bullets. These bullets are now in this gun, which means that I can shoot you, but also send you through time all at once. Finally, you will be out of my way so that I can marry my girlfriend, Sophie, later today before you're able to tell her that I'm a real shitty guy. I didn't know you were getting married today. I know. My girlfriend, Sophie, made an invitation for you because she admires you and thinks you're attractive, but I destroyed the invitation, then I lied to her and said that I gave it to you at work. But now I am here to give you a different invitation. Do your funeral. Paul Marine shoots at Bruce. Slobbo jumps in front of Bruce. No! Slobbo wasn't actually dead. He jumps in front of the bullets and is shot several times. <laughs> no! 
Now he is actually dead. <laughs> Avenge me. Okay. Bruce goes to attack Paul Serene, but now Paul Marine has disappeared. He, he's gone. Slobbo is dying on the ground, covered in blood. His body is red, like a hot dog covered in lots of ketchup. You must stop the wedding. You are totally a better guy and clearly more attractive than Paul. You should be dating his girlfriend, Sophine. Slobbo dies. Bruce just sits there next to Slobbo for a while because many people will be crying at this point. He eventually gets up. Looks like I'm going to a wedding. After all, he holds out the time knife. Somebody's got to cut the cake. Cut the cake means he's going to kill Paul. The audience will understand this because of the way the actor says it. It's a real intense moment. Bruce puts on his shades. End of Act One. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All right. Uh, it's an intermission. Uh, here we go. How are people liking this so far? <laughs> I think we're into it. Okay, ready? Are we, are we good? Everybody's still good with their audio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jump right into yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody's gonna cut the game. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that one. I like how you're like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he's gone. <laughs> so much passion. <laughs> okay, um, let's do this. Santa? Yeah. Act two. Bruce has just had his best friend killed by his boss, Paul Marine. Bruce now has a time knife that sends things through time if he stabs them. He is going to Paul Marine's wedding. Now, to tell his girlfriend, Safine, not to marry him because he's a real shitty guy. Interior, wedding building, day. It is a wedding. Paul Marine and his girlfriend, Safine, are getting married. Sophine is real attractive. If most girls are ham sandwiches, then she is a 16-ounce steak. Bruce enters the wedding building. Stop! Bruce, I'm so happy that you came. You can't marry Paul Marine. He's a real shitty guy. He's lying. I'm not. He killed my best friend with time bullets. But that's impossible. Time travel doesn't exist. That's what they want us to think. But I actually have a knife that is also a time machine and sends people through time when I stab them. Oh, I want to believe you, but it doesn't make sense. I will prove it. Bruce grabs Safine's mom. <clears throat> Here is a bunch of money for lottery tickets. Bruce gives Safine's mum a bunch of money for lottery tickets. He stabs her with the time knife. But gently, not violently, just so that she will travel through time with him. Sorry, just so that she will travel through time. She disappears. Safine's mum enters the wedding building. She is now wearing different clothes. He is right. He stabbed me gently with a time knife and I was sent to the past. He also gave me a bunch of money which I used to buy a lottery ticket that I knew would win. And now I have a million dollars. <gasps> you helped my mom become rich. Thank you, Bruce. You made me rich the first moment I saw you. Rich in my heart. With love. Oh, I always loved you most. But Paul Marine and I just got married. You're too late. Or is he? The minister pulls off his mask. He is actually George Washington. Bruce knew you were getting married, so he stabbed himself and traveled to the past. Then stabbed me so that I would be sent to this time. I then pretended to be a wedding minister for the ceremony, but I am actually not a wedding minister at all, which means the marriage isn't official. You did all this for me? Yes. I stabbed George Washington because I love you. Also, the man you were about to marry wasn't actually Paul Marine. Paul Marine takes off his mask. It's Slobbo, Bruce's best friend. This is actually a fake wedding. I saved Slobbo's life and then had him disguise himself as your boyfriend to make this look real. But it was actually a test to see if we were meant to be. Oh, the only thing meant to be... Is your death! 
<laughs> so fiend. Sorry, do you want to do that again? Do that one. The only thing meant to be is... Your death! <laughs> Safine pulls out a gun. She pulls off her mask. It's the real Paul Marine. But how? Well, I followed you to the past using my time bullets and discovered your plan to marry Sophine. So I already married Sophine in the past. She didn't want to. But then I showed her this baby. Paul Marine reveals a baby. I told her that this baby was actually our baby from the future, and that I used time bullets to travel with the baby back to the past to show her that we had a family together in the future. But in reality, it's just a baby that I stole that isn't mine. Then whose baby is it? (coughs) The real Safine enters, wearing futuristic pants and a shirt. Ours. Are you Safine from the future? Yes, you are very quick to understand things. I came to the past to tell you that in the future, you and I got married, Bruce. We had a very attractive and highly satisfying sex life, which led to the birth of our future child, Uruguay. That is the baby that Paul Marine is holding. He stole our baby. But why? Paul Marine stole our baby and then traveled to the past so that he could use the baby as a lie to trick younger me to marry him instead of saying that it was the actual baby that he would have had with me in the future. (sighs) The past version of me believed him and then because of this I married Paul Marine and no longer ever marry you at all. Oh man. It's over Bruce. We're married. Until death do you part. Bruce pulls out the time knife. (laughs) Paul Marine pulls out his gun with the time bullets inside. They have the best fight of any movie ever. At the end... (laughs) At the end, Bruce has Paul Marine with a knife to his neck. It's been a... Slice. Bruce lifts his knife up to cut Paul Marine. You won't get me this easy. Paul Marine aims the gun at himself and shoots himself 30 times. The clip is bigger than a regular pistol. Paul disappears. But then, 30 Paul Marines enter. I shot myself 30 times so that I was sent to many different times at the same time, which meant there were 30 of me. Now we are all here to kill you. Which means that each of you has a time bullet inside of you. Of course. But I made sure that we were all shot in areas that have no vital organs and we will get the bullets removed after we kill you. Unfortunately for you, I traveled to the past earlier and took your gun and added an electric charge on each of your time bullets. I control the electric charge with this handheld detonator. No! Yes. It's quite... shocking. Bruce presses the detonator. All 30 poor marines are electrified from the inside. Their skin, pe- their skin peels open. Their skin peels open all over like sausages that are left on the barbecue for too long. That peel open all over. The poor marines all die. Consider this my resignation. Ah, uh, yeah. God bless America. Bruce and Safine make out. <laughs> Yum. You just hear it too. <laughs> I didn't know what it was like that sound. Did I not? <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know that's what it makes like making out sound in like. That's not how you make out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, ready? Hold on, hold on, Back to make out. Okay, okay. Oh, you use your tongue so well. Oh, God. Okay.
Safine waits for a few seconds for the audience to stop applauding. Before saying her next line. Congratulations. You passed the test. Have you, what test? We always believed that you were the chosen one, so we traveled to the past to test you and make sure. We now believe that you are ready to fight the ultimate villain from the future. Okay. Who is the ultimate villain? His name is Paul Marine. But, but I just killed Paul Marine. <laughs> no, no. The Paul Marine you have known this whole time has actually been an actor from the future that we have paid to play Paul Marine for the test. The actual Paul Marine is exactly the same, but he lives in the future. He was an actor, which means my job was fake as well. Yes. That is the only reason why you were kept in a low-level position for so many years without a single promotion. And it appeared that people didn't give you the respect that you clearly deserve. Because, in reality, you are the chosen one. It all makes sense now. We must travel to the future. Are you ready? Looks like it's time to find out. Bruce puts on his shades. George Washington waves the American flag. End of movie. But don't worry, Bruce Savage will return in Time Life 2, The Wrecking. Which, by the way, we have to say, we have to thank Janina, because this was her yeah. idea. Completely. Yeah. Um, Completely. Sadly, like, we haven't even played the game yet, because we don't own Xboxes. Oh, no, but they, but they will. We will. We'll get, we'll get some very, very soon. soon. Very soon. Um, but we have seen some of the, the games. We watched it online, watched it with you guys playing it on here on Twitch. It, sound, also... it sounds like it, it was a really great experience. Marshall was telling me how yeah. he, you guys improvised. This is not a, too big of a spoiler if you haven't played it yet, but... That you improvised that entire scene well, we, on we, the couch at the party. Yeah, I went back to uh, the script uh, uh. and we, we improvised that whole scene and then we were able to find like other ways of like incorporating the knife that were in mm -hmm. the, the, the sword, yeah, the tiny yeah, the, sword. The sword, yeah, excuse me, the tiny sword. Not so, the time knife. Not the yeah. time knife. <laughs> <laughs> and like, we, but we, Ben was always open to like, yeah. you know, building on if a moment popped out and... Yeah, because we would have like, I remember... Uh, the scene when um, when my my wife and I were running out of the hospital. I mean that whole thing. It was just raining that day. There was all these things that, that started happening. That monologue that you give her, we just, like, this isn't just making me. it up. We were, I, I mean not making it up. It. Yeah. I, mean, I knew who the guy was, and yeah. so we were creating it sort of on the spot. I mean we I had mean, some finer points. That so were this is out. for the show, the quest, right? The actual yeah. episodes. The yeah, actual, yeah. The, yeah. The TV. Mealy is only in the beginning of the first episode. Well, she's, in, so she's not in much. She stopped what? No. I killed her. <laughs> yeah. I didn't That's right. know no. that you were gonna get shot. Well, it depends on the on the choice on you the make. Choice. So you obviously took the right. hard line. I did. And I, I, am, yes. <laughs> I apologize. You Sorry. could have had Amelia with you for the rest of the line. game. I just didn't know that they were gonna like point blank shoot you. I felt a little fucked up about that. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. And I would have to say, as an actor, like it was the first time where I was so impressed with how you were able to keep the script all together. Because like when we got the script, it was like yeah. there was junction. A, junction B, junction yeah. B A, junction oh, yeah. B B, junction yeah. B B. B, 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 B. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the that's, heck. That's good because I was worried. Well, I mean, I I didn't work on a lot of the TV show stuff, but like some of it, and, and for the the game, that was always like the most confusing thing. Is it's mm -hmm. like there's there's four this different junctions in the game, and there's you know compounding junctions like junction one mm -hmm. A, but now junction three B, this happens, yeah, and that kind of stuff. Like I I commend you guys for like keeping that all in your oh. heads like now we're going to redo the scene but in this version I'm doing something completely different or yeah. saying you know different attitude all that kind of stuff so which is it was really good. I mean there were so many different iterations for us to follow but it was it was really fun to sort of map that out in our heads and we were led well with our great director yeah, ben ben. gosh but what was also I think 
really cool for you guys to know is that we took this very seriously. I mean, we, I mean, it's, it could have been sort of this, I don't know, like people couldn't have taken, couldn't have treated it like, like a, you know, very serious. But we, I mean, I remember when Amelia showed up on set, I mean, she did like 15 takes bawling her eyes out when she was being interrogated. I mean, Marshall was showing up every single day. Like That was big for me, just to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Bring an agent. But we, yeah. but we went deep with these characters. We got very serious with them. You know, where are these people from? Where are they, you know, how is this guy trained? Or, you know, uh, uh, what is, where, where did these two, where did my wife and I meet? I mean, we treated it like... Patrick kicked me in the balls on one day. Nice. I was like, you're taking it too far. <laughs> You remember that? No. He was in the. the he was in it. He didn't. It? He was only hearing things. Yeah. Yeah. And Liam was hearing. Oh yeah, I yeah, remember yeah, that. Yeah, remember Sorry. That, yeah. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. bad at improv. Yeah. So that, so that <laughs> the monologue over. you did. Um, I don't want to be too spoilery, but the monologue that's towards the end of the whole piece. The show. Yeah. Okay, okay. The show. Yeah, the show. Did you improv? With. That? With you're standing against with me. each other. With me, it's when we're in the room, when we're in the um, we're the final scene before before uh. Oh, Is this in the room with the big thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, I don't want to talk about. I don't wanna, Are yeah. you as your character in the game as well? I th I think. Okay, did somebody corroborate that? Your voice yes. is in the game. Okay, your we voice didn't is we didn't scan your character, so you're in the game. I'm in the game. I your know that. Your character is. Yeah. Your voice is in the game. Always yeah. a bridesmaid. Radio <laughs> Never <laughs> bride. But, but you do find like your swiping card. Yeah. And there's some. Uh -huh. There yeah. are pieces, and then uh, I think times. there's some emails. Emails you wrote. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah! <laughs> you should have written time now. <laughs> That's crazy. So how much, so when did you, what do you know about the inception of this idea to like, to release date? Of Quantum? Yeah. Well, I, I moved to Finland to work on this project in 2012. So what? I was, yeah, I know. I actually just moved back I here. couldn't believe you were here. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. So yeah, yeah. You live, do you oh, wow. speak Finnish? Um, I'm with the I can hear Wow. A little bit. Nice. Yeah, so, so the, all of those <laughs> syllables the, meant yeah, a little bit. That was like yeah. Pokito Moss. Totally <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're just meeting I just Tyler. made up yeah. random Final words. Then. Yeah, I don't yeah. want it. Um, but the, the project was like, uh, Remedy was already developing the project. It was very early stages. The, mm -hmm. the project went through like many different shifts as we were figuring out what to do with it. Like from the very beginning, the idea was to have a, a TV show element and a game element. Um, and there was a lot of iteration to figure out what that meant and how the best way to do that was. Um, and at some point we kind of landed on the idea of having the game follow the heroes and the show follow the villains and kind of intertwining the two. But but uh, it took a while to get there. Like, yeah, there was a lot of, it, it's something that hasn't been done much, the whole like game and mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. interweaving. So not to this degree, certainly. Definitely not. I mean, um, there have been, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, they just felt like cutscenes to me. You know, just yeah, the, okay. long, yeah, long cutscenes. Long cutscenes. <laughs> Very long yeah. cutscenes. But that's essentially yeah. what they were, right? They yeah. drive the story forward. Sure. And, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, there is a, a bit of suspension of disbelief because it's real people now. It's, mm -hmm. it's like an actual yeah. video. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole like having your choices affect the TV show was. I mean, that was something that drew me to the project. It was really exciting to know that, like, I mean, you killed Amelia, yeah. and you felt terrible about it. Yeah. And, and you that's, felt fucked up about that's it. one of the most interesting things I think about the whole uh, experience. Is that like, and you know, it, it was tough to find out like what matters the most to the players, how big of changes you can make. There was a lot of kind of learning along the way, but but it was yeah, it was a really kind of unique and fun project. So. And when did you guys shoot the T V show? Almost a year a year and change ago. Year? Yeah, we started February like the this we got I got there on February the second or Oh yeah. I remember that. And then two thousand fifteen. I flew to Finland it's the day I finished shooting, which was like at the last week of March. Right. We shot the whole thing in like two months. Yeah, I think I came in, in, in March over to Atlanta. Yeah, where you were we, toward the end. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. The last couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, the game fun. portion, did you do full motion capture for... I did I did full... I mean, every time you see, like when you see my character moving around or walking mm -hmm. around, that's mm -hmm. me with, I mean, Aiden and Lance, uh, uh, Hatch and uh, Serene. We're in these full outfits, cameras on our all head. Over, yeah. Dots all over, Dots huge. I mean, so many cameras. Usually a lot of the, the motion capture that you see when they have those helmets, it's just one camera. But these ones had 
multiple all over to pick up very close uh, close-ups of our expressions and then they did this very intense motion capture at Remedy in Finland. Facial so capture. Facial, facial capture, capture yeah. which is and they also did a body capture too there to get like the costumes exactly right so they flew in overnighted my costumes that I wore for the shooting and then and they didn't I first kept the facial hair that I had like days with after shooting they shot that and recorded that and then they had to completely clean shave me um, and uh, and also capture all that as well, so they could very, get all the details of. So how they could get like moved. the layer of texture underneath. That, that's right. That was actually skin. one of the most complicated things with the project. Is yeah. when everyone does facial capture, they need to be clean shaven. Yeah. And we had like numerous actors who had me. like well, you but other people too. Yeah. Who yeah, were like, on, like Aiden's on Game of Thrones. Yeah. And they yeah. all have like beard contracts yeah. where it's like they're filming a show where they need to have a beard. So it's like we can't film during that period. I mean, so. I had to have facial hair. I was shooting the following week starting on Casual, the Hulu show. Mm -hmm. right. And I was doing like, you know, a bunch of episodes on that where they wanted me to have facial hair. And they, they I mean, they were sort of like, we made a higher, I mean, they were, you know, uh, they eventually, yeah. they, it okay. wasn't a big deal, but <laughs> but they got, they were mad <laughs> when it showed up. Yeah. They knew it. It was a whole so. thing. And they were, they were mad at, you know, that I didn't have it. And, oh, wow. You know, it's very but, hard to be that wanted. Let yeah. Me tell you. <laughs> I heard Andy Serkis can snap and grow a beard. Really? It's because <laughs> he's, he's very flexes. Greek. He's very Greek. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like it's, it's beyond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so crazy. Um, does anybody, do anybody have any questions? Maybe I can ask his people now that, uh, okay, ready? We're a little um, late though, aren't we? So, let's see. Should we stop our recordings? Oh yeah, yeah stop, stop the recordings. recordings. We still are going to pick up some things, I'm sure. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, and I know that people have to leave so soon. So we can't too. sit here forever, it's but I will totally. Time. I have a question. Did any of you get in touch with Sam Lake? I met him. Oh. I mean, I worked with him like every day, so. <laughs> so Is tell he a real us, person? Yeah. Tell us. He's a real some... human being. Never met him. Oh, I just got it. I just got a thing saying people Sam are mad. Lake. Sorry. Oops. <laughs> I just said people are mad. Spoiler, spoiler, stop. People, people are, are mad. mad. <laughs> it's all right. It's fine. What did um, we spoil? I don't know, but I don't spoil feel like we spoiled. We spoiled Time Knife! Oh, oh when we were talking about the last scene. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You guys didn't. You guys we didn't. fumbled we didn't through spoil. it. Yeah, we didn't. No, but I don't feel like we spoiled anything. No, if anybody's upset, we absolutely were very cautious. We did not spoil yeah, anything. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, and also, there's only so. Like, you can try to spoil yeah, no, it, but you can change. You can choose different things. And, sure. like, yeah. I was joking about so, his mysterious. Um, oh, okay. Sam, <laughs> Sam the, on, the only thing I know about Sam is that he, he actually emailed me back. Which is the nicest thing he possibly could have done with this tiny little idea and last minute ness that we did here. Like the fact that he took the time and was like, here's yeah, the the, the Kickstarter video that the guys made I'm at Remedy it. and and like sent it to me and Best it's just even on the show. You know, allowing us to do this is pretty fun. Um, well, so okay. okay, what can yes, you tell us how, what else can you tell us about Sam? Sam is awesome. Um, <laughs> You know, he's a big part of where the vision of Quantum Break came from. He's the creative de uh, director at, at Remedy. He's also the face of the original Max Payne. Yes. I don't know if you guys know this. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, he does that kind of like squinty, like, yeah. I just ate something sour. <laughs> is, that, is that his face at rest? Or is that <laughs> that's, that's his, that's his Max Payne? Resting bitch face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's all you need to know. He's, he's a Max Payne mm -hmm. and he's an awesome guy. That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Um, what's the funniest thing that happened during the shooting? It doesn't sound like anything was funny yeah. for you. No, you had to show no. up and... No. <laughs> like John. Yeah. You had a really intense day. I did. Yeah. I did. But Sorry? I got to end on a nice place because we started out with like the option one where I was like... I, I live, but option two, even though I died, was more fun to do. Okay, now we're really spoiling. Okay, okay. But it's, well, I guess I did already it, say that. And it's really at the beginning, so... Oh yeah, you have the options. Yeah, you have an option A and an option B. And you B. can choose. I think like and it's media the first has choice, so. talked about that okay. quite a bit. That's yeah, not I feel really... like there's the, the embargo has been lifted. Look, like... if you're here, it's because you know what Time Knife yeah, is. Sure. And if you know what Time Knife is and you haven't completed the game. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, um, uh, favorite scenes or moments? Funny, I'm trying to think. Well, we, we had a lot. I'll, I'll keep... Yeah, I'm like, I know stuff. we should have prepared. I don't know. This is an impromptu Q and A. Yeah. yeah. Um, I always Liam write my Burke questions is in so advance. So badass, says Time so Powers. Um, uh, okay, I didn't hear any spoilers. People are saying this is fine. Um, great, we're fine. So. Yeah. So what? So. What else do you want to tell anybody? I mean, I I loved. I mean, I'll tell. I'll share this kind of yeah. for. Yeah. I, you know, we, we spent a lot of time together, but I was also had a lot of time with just, 
um, with Lance or just Aiden or just on my own walking around in the dark. But, but it was really fun for me because it was the first time I'd done a lot of stunts in my life. And so I... I, they made you okay. This is what I don't get. Yeah. Is like, is this for motion capture? No, 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 no. For the live action. Okay. So for the live action, they I hadn't really done stunts in my night, and they did not want me to do stunts. They I had a double. They they had a whole team. They wanted me to, but I begged and begged and begged, and then finally, with that first stunt sequence we did was the sequence on the escalators, and so you did all that. Well, so my stunt double went in and did the first, the very first take, and I just kind of sat with the producer and I was like, I'm telling you, I can do this. And they're like, if you break your leg, okay. we're, we're we fucked. Cannot so continue. I can't keep going. So I was like, just trust me. So I got in there, I hopped and I did it. And then from that moment on, basically, I did every single stunt that, that you see, that everything that is, was shown uh, is all me, with the exception of like, two of the driving sequences where I turned the corner because they wouldn't let me get in the car. Right. That's different. You have to have um, a stunt license. But I did do some of the driving stunts as well. Um, but I didn't Ooh. I didn't do a couple of the peeling rounds. But they were great. They were great teachers and, and it was really fun. And my how a double works in, in that instance, by the way, and a lot of like, he was so incredible because he would teach me, he would learn the fights and then teach me all. Also different to most stunt shooting situations. Like I just did a film where we, we we trained for like a month before we do a big sequence. We were learning the day of, and I was kind of practicing in between takes and then coming in, you know, grabbing guns and doing the whole thing. It was, it was super fun. I mean, and, and then you really look fun. like such a badass. Yeah. I mean, well, you're like, you went to Juilliard, you went to like theater school, you're uh -huh. a theater dork, and was, you get to look like a badass. It it's was the fun. best and, and here's gig the thing. ever. It was the best gig ever because for me, you have to understand, I. I grew up a gamer and I was playing all through. I mean, we used to take Xboxes in college. We used to, I mean, because I, you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit older maybe than I look. I don't know, maybe I'm exactly as old as I look, but I was in college when Halo 1 came out, which was uh, a huge deal. I mean, for us, we all bought Xboxes. We used to travel up in New York City. To, to Spanish Harlem, plug our boxes together with Ethernet cables, get two boxes in one room, two boxes in another <laughs> oh room. Oh my God. We had screens with projection screens in each room, and we would pick captains like schoolyard style and say, you know, pick eight, eight on eight and play Halo, like, you know, all those. That's awesome. King of the Mountain and, you know, the whatever they call it, the hot potato with the skull. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you know, team. Team Deathmatch, but uh, still have my those. question is, how good were you? Were you like a top so, pick on no, the team, or were you like I wasn't. the last we, guy? We had a couple. We had a couple. Um, we had a couple guys, and this girl that I went to high school with, who was a, she's an unbelievable at Halo. And these two guys, uh, there were two guys that were just also phenomenal. So there was this one guy, her, and then this other guy, and they were sort of top tier. I was mid level, and then of course it's like playing poker or something like that, where you have. You have people show up every week who are really good and just total pros. And you have people who play sometimes, and then you have people that you know you're just going to take the money. Um, oh, yeah. And so there was like that. But they're so, having fun, and it's but they're having fun, yeah. and it was great. You yeah. know, they would switch out all the time, and but yeah, yeah. I definitely got to stay in for the for the duration of the night. I mean, we would play till like till the sun came up. We oh would finish God. rehearsals oh. for plays mm -hmm. at college, and then wait, yeah. leave your yeah. mics on because we're going to do pickups. Oh, so yeah. try to put oh, them yeah. exactly. I don't know if this before. ages me, but. Okay. When I was in high so, school, I played Golden Knight. Uh, yeah, I know people have to go, so that means that we are going to stop this here. Um, okay. So <laughs> people say they're taking notes. Okay. So, thank you guys so, 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 so much for joining yeah. us. Yes, thank this you. This is so fun. Thank you, Tyler, for letting us have this script. So no, being thank a you part guys for this. showing up. Um, and we're going to, um, I'm going to edit this and you will be able to listen to it as a radio play and share it with all of your friends as soon as possible. And I will link out all of those things. And animate it. Animate it. Oh yeah! Somebody animate it. Oh god, it. don't tease me. Don't tease me. It's too fun. It's actually fun. I just, I've done this with a couple groups of friends before just this. We were like, hey, let's, have, let's get together and read yeah. this really fun yeah, script. Man. It's of really course. fun. It's like, we were saying earlier, like, it's like saying, let's build a fort. Except all of your friends are like architects <laughs> and know how to build a seven tier fort. You know? <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, thank you so much for joining us. This is my first Twitch. Guys, yeah. Wow. So thanks for being part of this. And now I have to figure out how to turn it off. All right. <laughs> Bye, everyone.